the Facebook, YouTube. Whoo. <laughs> Today I'm finna talk to you about uh, I'm finna start, I guess, another series, a series of this. I gotta teach a series of this. This is very important information concerning the uh, Christianity. I mean, of of us fulfilling our purpose concerning God. I mean, it's amazing that, you know, this is not, people are not seeing things correctly because, of course, when you doing something incorrectly, you are not seeing things correctly. And that's really the case, you know, the church, you know, and we're operating in tradition, religion, and you know, division, you can't see things correctly. But what's, you know, really the true divine purpose of God, I, you know, I'm kind of trying to show. Now, I'm going to talk to you about, you know, in Ephesians 3, is a very important understanding that, you know, we have to understand as Christians, as Christians, not as religious people, but as Christians, if we want to understand our, you know, divine destination, you know, that, wow, it's a powerful divine destination that we did not see accordingly to how we're supposed to see it. Now, I'm going to show you, I got a diagram, I got to pull out a diagram on this one, that, you know, first of all, I'm going to start on the scripture that, uh, that I'm, you know, helping you trying to understand this, um, this, this mystery that, of Christ has right in the Bible that you know we're not performing in that minute mystery because of um, disobedience, simple disobedience. It's just Adam and Eve all over again, just disobey God. You know. But I'm gonna show you the revelation of you know, I hope that this revelation will get people to understand that we're supposed to be all about fellowship. You know, now we have to be all about fellowship because of we put ourselves in a bad position. But anyway. Uh, I'm finna start off, you know, talking about the, uh, the, uh, Ephesians 9 and 10 <clears throat> and 11. And, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world have been hidden in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. To the intent that now unto the principalities, Satan and his demons, and the powers, fallen angels, aliens, in the heavenly places might be known by the church <laughs> the manifold wisdom of God. Now, I'm mainly going to show you, you know, the diagram of the ideal reality of the manifold wisdom of God. And I hope you can get this. Now, uh, now I'm going to talk to, you know, mention, you know, in uh, Ephesians 2 and 6, it's talking about, and had raised us up, the church, together, together, not divided and separate, but together, and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Not in ourselves, but in Christ Jesus. Now, I looked up, of course, manifold in Google. And I come across this idea, what it was pre uh, teaching, that, you know, they study, they study this in universities. I uh, just come to understand this, you know, about trying to figure out this, you know, idea. Now, I want you to go to Google back to, uh, if you saw my last video, I want you to go Manifold. I want you to go to Manifold on Google, and I want you to click in the top po the, the, the topolitical space. It's right beside when you read Manifold, you see top. A P a T O P O L O G I C A L. I don't know how I'm saying it right, but I'm saying it topolo topological topological space. Click in topological space in there, and 
go down until you see open set definition. Open set definition. Now, when you go to open set definition, you will see uh, one, two, three. Now, you will see one, two, three on there, you know. And you will see the one, two, see, find a one, two, three that is like this. You find a one, two, three that is like this. Now, when you see that one, two, three that is like this, that is the idea of what, you know, is supposed to be all about concerning the church. You know what I mean? Well, heaven and earth. Now, I'm going to go to, you know, the uh, Matthews. Go to Matthews uh, 6 and 10. And it says, Thy kingdom come, <laughs> thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, what you got to understand in this, di I'm going to show you this diagram that I'm going to show you. Now, the one, two, three. God taught me about this a long time ago. It's amazing, you know, about the important numbers of one, two, three. Now, one, two, three is the only order concerning, you know, counting that adds up, that can only add up in order, as in one plus two equals three. No, you can't add up four, five to six, or seven to eight to nine, you know. You can't add those together in order. But one, two, three is the only, you know, set, you know, in the number, you know, counting thing that you can add, add in order. Add one, one plus two equals three. You can add in order. Order, you see that? Order. And the reason, and the thing is, you have to understand that. And what you got to understand that the two, the one, two, three is an important idea of, of God show me formula that you got to understand that I see the colleges and universities are trying to figure this out. You know, when I was looking in Google that, you know, you have to add these up and understand what goes there. Now, God taught me about uh, knowledge, wisdom and understanding and how to truly elevate wisdom you know elevate to the divine wisdom of god now the thing is people don't understand that you know that there's a, but in first john first corinthians it talks about the wisdom of of men and it talks about the foolishness of god and in of course the second chapter talks about the wisdom of Man, you, it gets on. I mean, the wisdom of God. It teaches the wisdom of God, and the wisdom of God is about spirit. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know. You just look at that. It's about spiritual wisdom, not about you know man's wisdom. There's man's wisdom, and there's spiritual wisdom. See, now I'm finna show you in this graph. I'm finna show you that you know. I hope you look at you know first uh, first Corinthians and one and two. You know that it it, it talks about. The idea of this idea, you know, but, you know, but the whole agenda, you're going to find out that the church, Jesus Christ came to die on the cross, that we will connect heaven back to earth. That's what it means to say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Dying, that means God and Jesus kingdom shall come if we let his, if we let the will of God be done. On earth, which is, you know, the first, the first one is earth. You know, the first one is earth. I'm going to show you, like, the first one is earth. And the sec and as it is in heaven is the third one. The third is the heaven. And what you see, but what's this two right here? This two right here is important to understand. And, you know, it's important to understand. And what it is is talk about the divine. Uh, there's two understandings that you know. Unfortunately, Satan, you know, in his manipulating schemes, and you know, uh, there's two understandings in this world. There's a natural understanding, and there's a divine understanding. I did a teaching on that on Mac Johnson, the reality. I hope you go type in, you know, uh, and find that out. Uh, there's there's divine understanding. There's natural understanding. Now there's knowledge. 
Now, the number one is talking about knowledge, you know, of this world. Now, I got a, here it is, a graph that I'm trying to describe to you that's called knowledge of this world, the earthly places, you know. Now, we're made to set together in heavenly places, but this is the earthly places. Now, in this earthly places, in, in, in this earthly places, this is where Satan want to keep us at. He wants to keep us in the earthly places that we start fellowshipping about the things of this world. You know, it says that's why Paul says, you know, in Second Corinthians 4 and 4, the God of this world, he's the God of the uh, world. You know, he wants us caught up in the things of this world to speak about the things of this world. And he wants us to circle, you know, think about the things of this world, you know, system and how it's operating. He wants to keep us. In natural understanding, understanding the natural things of this world. You know what I'm saying? And guess what? The church, unfortunately, is a system that is trying to under, trying to use, you know, the knowledge of God and try to put it and teach people in a natural perspective that has to do with only the earth. It, try, it has the earth involved in it. For instance, I tell people about, you know, you know, God, Jesus said, you know, you can't only serve two masters, either God or mammon. And mammon means wealth. And wealth is concerning money. And the thing is, what we need to understand, we're not supposed to be serving mammon or money because money, first of all, is of the earth. It's an earthly item. You know what I'm saying? It's supposed to be about God, you know, you know, taking care of us. That's what the whole thing about Matthew 6 was, you know, really trying to explain to us that, God, he, he took care of the uh, birds. He took care. He clothed the glass. Can he take care of us? And it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. You know what I'm saying? It didn't say that you're supposed to go get them. He said, if you do this, I'll bring addition to you. He will bring provision. Jehovah Jireh will be the provider, just like he did to the children of Israel in the wilderness. Now, the thing is, but they want to teach you that, oh, you need... Money needs to be involved in your life. You know, oh, money supposed to play a role in your life. And the things of this world, you need the blessings of the earth. You blessings of the earth and operating the earth system to keep you in this natural understanding that you don't get to the divine understanding. Now, I'm going to show you what, you know, the divine understanding in Ephesians, uh, first chapter and 17. Uh, it says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you unto you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation of the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and the, what the riches of the glory is in his inheritance in the saints. Now, we busy think that this, you know, riches is down on earth. <laughs> we think, oh, it's you're gonna give me money, you're gonna give me a car, you're gonna give me a house, you're gonna give me this, you're gonna No, that's not really the riches of what he's talking about. Now, if you understand that, you know, he said we're made, we were raised to sit together in heavenly places. Hmm. Now, the thing is, now we look at now uh, I'm gonna show you and go back to the men of now. Remember, it says it's a, the fellowship of the mystery from the beginning of the world that's been hidden in God. Now, in the beginning, what God created heaven and earth, right? You know, he created heaven and earth. Now, if you go to the 14th verse on the 15th, it says, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the, you know, whole family in heaven is. And earth is named. Heaven and earth is named. The ideal, we that's what's saying that heaven and earth. If we fulfill this prophecy here, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to show you. If we do this, you know what I'm saying? Heaven and earth will be connected. And that's what this is saying concerning the manifold wisdom here. That heaven and earth will be corrected. But we need to lean to our understanding to fulfill his purpose. Now, you're supposed to go to Matthews, you know, 13 and 15. Now, Matthews 13 and 15 talks about the understanding of God. I run out of time. I got to do it too. 
I want to give you the blessing. To God be the glory here forever. Jesus, amen.